Hello everybody, and welcome to Cubone, my name is Quinton. Today is Thursday, May 9th, 2024, and we just had a new war bond release. The Polar Patriots War Bond. I don't know why I'm still wearing these. And today we're gonna just get right into it because we have quite a few new things to go over. Namely, first of all, the AR-61 Tenderizer. This weapon absolutely burns through ammo. So while it's good for taking out key light armor targets, the general fodder will just eat into your reserves too quickly to recommend it over something like the Liberator. Likewise, the medium armor penetration of other weapons like the Plasma and Scorcher just blow it out of the water. I like the weapon. I really do. It looks cool. It's the Starship Troopers fantasy. It kind of looks like the uh, Halo battle rifle was what I was thinking of. It unfortunately does not stick out a lot. It just kind of it's another AR that doesn't have any staying power, doesn't have anything to make it stick out. It's just not good enough to be what we need. Moving on to what is easily my favorite weapon in the Bond, the SMG-72 Pummeler. There are not a lot of one-handed options in the game, and most of what you have are pistols, lacking the stopping power required to survive. The Pummeler mixed with the Ballistic Shield, you become a defensive bastion. Additionally, the utility that comes with being able to shoot behind you as you sprint is beyond goaded. Not the biggest thing, but you can even use it while running with objectives that lock you into one-handed weapons. This was actually shown in the trailer, which, you know, not the real thing I would have focused on, but I had avoided other SMGs in favor of more powerful weapons, but this new SMG absolutely destroys, and I recommend any Patriots looking for a good change of pace should definitely pick this up. Supplementing that, the P113 Verdict, the new pistol. Look, it's the last weapon in the pass. If I want to get this video out in time, I'll just have to generalize this one for now. I haven't had time to use it myself, but the damage is absolutely wonderful for a secondary. This is effectively your Deagle in Helldivers 2. And as is pretty normal for a Deagle, high damage looks awesome, but not what I'd go to supplement a more powerful primary. That's why we have the Redeemer, which is fast and able to take out smaller targets while you're main weapon is out of ammo. The new verdict is seemingly going to work better with things like the SMG, because you have the SMG to handle the quick fights, and then anything maybe a bit bigger, the Deagle actually has the damage to take them out. So it, it's kind of a reversal for the primary and the secondary, and I think that's a very interesting shift that I'm looking forward to giving a shot. I might try it with the Eruptor and see how that works, though that does go basically against what I just said. That and or the Ballistic Shield and see how that fares, because the Ballistic Shield, a lot of things in this bond seem to actually mesh very well with the Ballistic Shield. Unfortunately, this is not one of them, the Plaz 101 Purifier, the big brother of the Plaz 1 Scorcher. I have been excited for this one. Boasting a very nice 250 damage, it unfortunately suffers from a 1.5 second charge up time. And while it does handle the bigger enemies with some very decent effectivity, uh, the time could be better spent that was the cat. That time could be better spent taking out the fodder with the Scorcher, and the Scorcher has the power to follow that up and take on the medium threats as well. It's just not a good enough trade-off to justify taking it over other things. It's just not fun. Back to something that is very fun, the G13 Incendiary Impact absolutely wonderful at crowd control. While it is missing the insta-kill power of the default impacts, the area of effect is much wider, with the added bonus of a napalm effect left behind for damage over time to kill anything small and do decent damage to anything bigger. This is effectively Helldiver's Molotov cocktails, and I love it, at least against the bugs. It fills this wonderful niche of being able to get in something quick and powerful, but also leaving behind uh, something that'll take out any enemies that spawn behind it. It's wonderful for bug breaches, that's what I'm saying. You have a bug breach, things start to come out of it, you throw down an incendiary, and a lot of the smaller stuff that'd be crawling out of that bug hole is taken care of instantly. Absolutely wonderful. It, it just it clears up so much of 
the stress of dealing with these smaller enemies so that you can focus on the bigger ones. I, I really think this one's going to rise to be a very integral piece of equipment for a lot of Helldivers. I don't know that it's going to overtake the regular impacts, but it is a wonderful alternative. Speaking of alternatives, the Motivational Shocks Booster is the new booster in the Warbond, and it prevents stun locks from things such as Hunters and Acid. It's very useful, uh, and something for me that is almost necessary, almost being the keyword. It's definitely one to consider when playing with four players, but for those of us that average one or two, the Hellpot Optimization, Sprint Boost, and Vitality Boost are almost always going to take the slot first. I think it's a good addition, just another one that could have been a lot more. I want to run it, I really do, but it's just, it's not better than having full stims, full grenades, extra health, or being able to get the fuck out of there as soon as I need to. Overall. The Warbond's good in a vacuum. It unfortunately does further highlight some issues that the community has had with the game's features in general. While the Pummeler plays very well in the game's current state, providing an option in a fun new niche, and the G13s are a wonderful alternative to the impacts, the other two primary weapons, not that the grenades are a primary, but the other two main weapons fail to stand out in any way that provides any serious value. Not every weapon needs to be meta, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't say that the Pummeler is meta, but it's very fun and provides something that you can't get out of other weapons. That's what the Tenderizer and Purifier are missing. If the Tenderizer had more ammo, I could enjoy using its decent power to push through hordes, and while the Purifier ticks a lot of boxes, I'm not interested in spending half my time in a gunfight waiting on my weapon to catch up. I'll continue testing, maybe I'll find something that'll change my mind, but that's where I sit now. What likely won't change are my feelings on the booster and the armor. These are issues with the game, not the items. The booster's great, just not better than what we had, and unlike the weapons, there's no reason to not take whatever's the best thing we have available. The armor though is much worse. I actually really dig the look of the armor, snow variants are always great, but the armor passives continue to let me down. They provide nothing new and are basically just cosmetic. I get it, maybe that's what the devs want from armor, so no one has to pick between utility or fashion. But when the Winter Warrior armor was advertised with having optical camouflage in snowy environments and its passive is servo assisted, there's just no personality in the armors and I kind of stopped caring about what looked good. That said, the Kodiak does look awesome. These are issues with the game and I don't know how easy it would or wouldn't be to go about solving these issues, but they continue to stand out as a genuine sour point for the game. More passives would only diversify the fashion scene of the game, and I'd love to see more of that, instead of everyone wearing the same armor, because why ever change? Altogether, as usual, the bond is a thousand super credits and it's never going away. So if you find enough credits while liberating the galaxy, pick it up. If you've got 10 bucks and nowhere else to spend it, I'd say this is probably the best premium war bond so far, but that isn't saying much. The incendiaries and pummeler absolutely are worth the 10 bucks. The verdict is nice, especially to supplement the pummeler, and the new booster provides a good new option in full lobbies. That's the majority of the new content. It's only the two weapons I was actually looking forward to that failed to meet expectations. But I'm gonna keep working with these weapons, see what I can find, and bring it to you in terribly slow uploads after everyone else has outpaced me. I'm joking, of course, but I, I, I do enjoy doing these videos, that's why I'm here. And I hope you guys enjoy them too. Either way, remember to be gay, do crimes, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.